Seriously, what? Like, bitch, just cut the rope. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 19th episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 224th episode overall, titled Passing the Torch Part 2. We begin this episode in the forest where Justin, Adam, and Tanya are running. Shift in the Turbo! The three face off with Flamite taking out their turbo weapons, and then taking the time to announce each of them. They then fire at Flamite, but nothing is working. Then he spits fire at them and they recoil. Then Adam sees a water bucket by their campfire, jumping over there, and he tosses the water on Flamite, causing him to steam. Flamite then just teleports away, and they decide that they should go get Tommy and Cat now. I feel like you guys are kind of late on the Tommy front. PJ, Cassie, and Cat are actually still fighting these damn Piranatrons, but then the Piranatrons get blown up by green, blue, and yellow, which make the Piranatrons retreat. TJ and Cassie explain that Cat lost her friend, and the Rangers say, Miss, what happened to your friend? And she explains that a creature in slime took him. Adam then tells Cassie and TJ to leave, and Cassie tries to stay with her to make sure that she's okay, but Cat declines. They leave. They immediately talk about how it was definitely a future pod that got Tommy. Speaking of whom, Tommy is hanging from a rope via his hands, and Deer Talks wants to make sure that Tommy suffers as she kills him. She wants to make him beg for mercy. Then Deep Talks' mom's apparition thing shows up, and Tommy's already talking crap about how ugly her mom is. Deep Talks' mom suggests the vortex of eternal doom and sorrow. How did Deep Talks not remember that old thing? Her mom calls out the vortex via a rhyming spell that sounds terrible, and it opens up underneath Tommy, who is a little bit freaked out. Deep Talks mentions how she can hear her dad's voice in the vortex. Well then. Then Deep Talks puts peanut butter on a rope, with a rat there to chew through the rope. Literally, what the fuck? She leaves. At the power chamber, they see a giant flame mite is attacking Angel Grove, but Cat is too busy thinking about Tommy. Then Tanya points out that the giant monster takes priority. Then Demetrius says that there's another mission here too, showing an hourglass with sand running through it. Apparently this is their ultimate mission and they say that they won't let her down. They're going to head to town and they tell Alpha to let them know as soon as they get a lock on Tommy. Shift in the turbo. In the city streets, we see the military for what may be the first time ever in Power Rangers evacuating the citizen. Then the rangers show up and Adam takes the time to stop a woman to yell at her to not panic while Flamite is spitting giant flames. Cat yells that they have to get everyone out of there. Cassie and TJ are walking together talking about how cool the Power Rangers are and Cassie says that she'd rather be Tina Turner though than a Power Ranger. TJ explains that when he was a kid, he wanted to grow up and be a Power Ranger. Turns out he never had to grow up, if you're Justin. Then they find a slime trail and TJ immediately knows that these tracks will lead them to Tommy. Cassie just repeatedly says no. Cassie says that the rangers are on already so she's gonna go find her bag and leave. TJ decides to run up the hill alone. Meanwhile the rats are chewing through the rope because this is the stupidest thing ever. We then see that Ashley is evacuating everyone from the city and she gets more people from Tanya. Then Adam recruits Carlos to help them get everyone to safety, but he calls him Carlos. Why would the Green Ranger know Carlos's name? Deodox decides to send Piranatrons to help Flamite, and we see that they appear by a fire truck, which makes the firemen just scream and run away. They then start climbing on the truck, but here come Kat and Justin fighting off the Piranatrons. Then Adam and Tanya show up. TJ is still following the slime trail, and he looks up, fighting Cassie on a rock. Cassie says that she can't leave a friend in need, and she guesses that they're friends now. Also, apparently, according to Alpha and Demetria, the Rangers are running out of time. For what? TJ and Cassie then hear a noise, and they go to check it out. They enter the cave. Meanwhile, Tommy's rope snaps a bit more. At the youth center, we see on TV that everyone is being evacuated there while the news coverage talks about this really bad monster attack. Carlos and Ashley are there telling all the kids to stay calm because the Power Rangers are handling it. Then Cassie and TJ come in finding Tommy. Tommy tells them to fuck off, but then the Piranatrons show up behind them and they start fighting them. Cassie tries to get Tommy, but then she gets attacked too, so now Tommy is just watching the rope in the vortex below. Then his rope snaps, but TJ grabs it just in time to help keep Tommy afloat. Cassie runs over to help, grabbing Tommy and lowering him onto the ground. Tommy thanks them for the help and they run out of the cave together. Cassie then says it was nice to help, but she has a bus to catch. TJ then introduces himself to Tommy, shaking hands. They decide to leave separately, and Tommy teleports away via a sound. Meanwhile, the other rangers are fighting off the Piranatrons in the city, and Giant Flamite finds them around a corner. Then he gets hit with some lasers, and here comes Tommy, coming into the scene. They call out their Turbo Zords, forming the Turbo Megazord. Flamite creates giant steam jets around them, tossing wooden buckets at them because this guy is clearly like a Japanese summer festival themed monster. They then just use their spin out attack killing him. That was super underwhelming for a guy who has almost helped kill everyone. At the power chamber, Alpha is convinced that the rangers won't make it and I just realized that Demetra is now no longer speaking in questions. So much for that. At the youth center, Carlos is reading a book to a kid and he sees the green ranger for a second before he looks back and he's gone. Then Ashley sees the yellow ranger through a window and she looks back and she's gone too. This has no point. Underwater, Deep Talks is trying to lay down in bed, but her mom shows up, scolding her for messing up because Tommy is still alive. She gets told how she's messed up everything since she was a little kid. 
At the power chamber, the hourglass is out of sand, and they say that they couldn't let down Demetria. They will now begin the ceremony. They all enter a door. In a room full of rocks and old command center parts, the five rangers stand in front of a rock with a giant lightning bolt that's flashing their ranger colors. Alpha 6 says that they're expecting some friends to drop by and join in on the celebration, and it's Zordon. Alpha 5 also shows up, which is nice. Demetria then shows up to talk about how they each reach the state in life where they are set free from their ranger duties. You guys got this backwards. Start them as adults and release them as elders, not start them as teens and release them as young adults. They've been asked to choose an outstanding individual who will take over as their successor. We then see them. Tommy says that TJ will be the new leader as the new Red Ranger. Tanya explains that Ashley is compassionate, so she's the new Yellow Ranger. Kat then says that Cassie will be the new Pink Ranger, and Adam says that Carlos will be the new Green Ranger. Justin will continue as the Blue Ranger, getting teleported onto Rock with the others, standing helmetless. Then Demetria says how the Power Rangers are now a new team of warriors. The legacy continues. The end. Okay, there's a lot to explain about this, so I'll start with the episode itself. It's actually pretty okay, and while I wish they had introduced Cassie and TJ like way earlier, this is the first time I noticed that they actually gave TJ and Tommy a moment together as well as Cassie and Kat. Granted, they're pretty minimal engagement, but like, eh, it is what it is. Also, yeah, four-fifths of the cast is now completely different. It's kind of shocking, but I actually like this new cast a lot. I think I've grown so tired of Kat and Tommy, so their changes are welcome for their characters. Adam and Tanya hurt a lot more, especially Tanya. Okay, so remember the Millennium message? How it showed something that Detox was pissed off about and we as the audience never saw it? And then she immediately targeted the soccer game and then the next episode we were introduced to Carlos and Ashley. So the original plan was that she saw four individuals as Power Rangers in that message. Carlos, Ashley, or Missy as her original name was, someone named Michael, and Jenny, Stone's niece. Which is why she is now targeting Carlos and Ashley pretty consistently and she targets Jenny's dance audition because she wants to kill them before they can even become Power Rangers. This is all lost when the writers change halfway through Turbo. I've heard that the other writers were fired but I couldn't tell you why. I think the show just wanted to go in a different direction at that point. Plus it seems to be for the better because the old writers were constantly arguing about whether to embrace the comedy of the Japanese footage or play it straight which is how we end up with Tommy looking through the manual of his Zord. Also, Carlos was originally intended to be the Red Ranger, Missy slash Ashley was going to be the Pink Ranger, Michael, who we know very little about besides that he's supposed to be an intern at uh, Tanya's radio station, was going to be the Green Ranger, and then Jenny was going to be the Yellow Ranger. Though I think they were going to make Jenny pink and Ashley yellow toward the end there. The writers knew that Jason David Frank was leaving since the beginning of Turbo. He apparently wanted to leave before the Turbo movie even happened, but they renegotiated with him so that the first 19 episodes of Turbo were in his contract. Catherine Sutherland had also expressed interest in leaving the show to pursue other projects. However, Nakia Baris and Johnny Young Bosch had no intention of leaving the show at all. Instead, they found out they were being replaced when they saw in the newspaper that there was an ad out for four new Power Rangers and not just two. Apparently, this was an executive decision to just replace all the four old Rangers in one swoop to leave the show with a fresh look. I have to admit, I think they made the right call brand-wise, but it sucks because I like Adam and Tanya. Also, apparently Adam, you know how his hair got long during Turbo? Apparently it was so that they had someone with long hair now to replace Jason David Frank. So yeah, that's a condensed version of what was happening behind the scenes on Turbo around now. And long story short, things were messy, which is how you end up with four new Power Rangers, 19 episodes into a 45 episode season. So next time we spend our first full episode with our brand new Rangers, who will be my favorite? Will I still hate Justin? How much pink is Cassie going to be forced to wear from now on? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.